Alright. Little client who's gained my table. First thing <laughs> what I want to do is make a connection. Just settle into the body. I like a little wiggle. I want to see what her fascia feels like. Is it really loose? Is she very tight? I also, just by doing this, I get a kind of a sense of how connected her shoulders are to her back. Just a general feel of what her tissue feels like. I will move down to one leg. Superficial friction. Ah, that was what it's called. Superficial friction. <laughs> three times. Everything is three, so you don't have to think about it real hard. Superficial friction. From the foot up through the hip. Two, three. Now I'm going to go a little deeper. Deeper compressions. Mainly trying to increase blood flow. Deep compressions times two. Up to the hip. Deep compressions times three. If I want, if I found something that's a little hypertonic, I might <clears throat> spend a little bit of extra time on it, like this poor calf. Needs a little extra deep work. I'm going a little more. It's a vent massage. <clears throat> Pre-event, this is what I'm considering, like beforehand or right after the event. I'm not going to do a lot of point work. I'm going to keep things fairly um, compressory and relatively light. Even if they just came off the race, I don't want to do deep work. That's what you try to bring them back uh, to, your, uh, to your shop for. Little traction. Now, if we bring this leg up, we're like, <clears throat> this is where we can stretch the calf. So I'm going to do a light mow with the calf. Her ball of foot is in my axillary. I'm dropping my body weight down, and I'm going to check out a little range of motion. Compress, a little stretch. I'm going around in a slight circle to see what the range of motion of the ankle is. About three or four times. Are you just supporting the knee, or are you doing anything? I am just keeping stable. Yep, okay. just supporting the knee so I can feel what that joint's up to. Now I'll give it a little stretch. Now we can stretch the quad. Bring the hip or the knee towards the glute to it initiates a little stretch. A little stretch. A little stretch. I can check out the hip flexor if I want to. I'm not going to go real deep in this. It's hard to stretch people's hip flexors. But we can try like this too. Three, groovy. Spin the leg. A little shaky, shaky. Other side. <clears throat> Superficial friction. Okay, we're trying to warm up the skin, <clears throat> warm up the limb. Three or four times, see what it feels like. This side feels a little tighter. Deeper compressions. I can compress with both hands. I can use a little fist if your hands fatigue. I can use both, almost like a little CPR type motion here, hinging from the hips. Trying to keep good mechanics. Compressions roughly three times. This calf has got to loosen up. I feel that lateral side. Through a little tighter here. I'm going to do just a little extra work. Maybe a little ringing back and forth. I don't want to do deep trigger points, anything too specific. Everything's kind of broad in general. Compress. Compress. That's a little softer. I'll do a couple light strokes. Merge my way out of that. Yay. Traction. Let's check out the calf. Tuck that in. A range of motion, a little stretch. I'm flexing it just till I feel the tissue start to resist me. And then I'll take it in just a little circle. Just checking out range of motion of the ankle and knee. A little traction stretch. I want to, with the traction, I just want to distract that joint. I want to see it go bloop. And just a little bit. We did the calf, now the knee. Take it up into a little stretch. Back it off to the stretch. A little stretch. Hip flexor. Again, I don't love stretching hip flexors on the table. I'm mainly just doing it here. It's one of the things you can stretch. That feels so good. Isn't that nice? Yes. <laughs> when we start the actual class, I'll show you about four different ways to stretch that's hip flexors. Because cool. if you have a Gumby on the table, you're like, that's nothing. <laughs> so that's the legs. 
moving up to the low back, cross fiber, or uh, superficial friction, starting at the sacrum, working away at the spine. Deep compressions, don't push on the spine itself, stay in the laminar groove, paraspinal, deeper compressions on one side. I have deeper compressions on my side, so I don't have to run around. Nice. There's two little moves that I love here. One, you guys already learned probably in Jody's class, lumbar stretch. On the spine, far side, on the spine, near side. Far side, on the spine, near side. The other one I want, like is mitten grip, little pincer grip of the traps. So we can compress and squeeze those traps. Again, we did our superficial friction. This is more compressory. I can also get into the shoulder joint in front. Terry. Back of the shoulder. Make my way out. A couple light strokes. Front around. Pincer grip. Traps. I squeeze. My other hand just helps keep my balance. I like to either brace on their sacrum, something that's non-compressible, or the table, but I still like to keep track of their body. Good squeeze. Look at the mat just a little tight there. We'll just give it just a little extra superficial friction to make our way out. Cha-cha-cha. Ten minutes is a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and scooch down. Flip to your back, please. Often in an event with only 10 minutes, I like to ask my client, do you want me to stretch your hips or work on your shoulders? You almost don't have time for both. So we'll go through the legs. Starting on this leg, superficial friction. Working up the quad, deep the tib, quad, deep the tib, deep compressions, just squeeze. We're going to pretend you wanted your hip stretch. <laughs> Good mechanics. This is how I lift the leg. Because a lot of times they want to fight you and they keep their leg real stiff. You know, I'm like, oh, that. <laughs> Stretching a hip safely, <clears throat> keeping the knee on this side of the body. Soft circle. Take it up towards the shoulder till you feel the lightest bit of resistance. Take it out in the circle. Make that circle slightly larger. Come across to the other side. No pain. Uh oh, there's a little pain. Oh. We're across medial. A little hip impingement. I'm not going to go across medial because she made the wincy face. <laughs> so I'm going to stay on this side. Cool. Here's where it gets fancy, and we'll practice this. Compress. We want to drop down to anchor this hip and pelvis against the table. Now, exactly. Now we come up. Uh, just before she makes the wincy face, I feel resistance in the joint. It can go farther, but I feel resistance. Now I'm going to add the twist. This gets hip and glute. This gets piriformis and rotators. And now I can hang out here. Go from the far shoulder to the near shoulder. Check things up. I can flip up into hamstring. From here, I can stabilize the knee. There's the wincy face. <laughs> if they're excessively flexible, you're like, fine, I'll get you. <laughs> She's not that much excessively flexible, so this is all over. Right. Checking the work in the hamstring here. I'll back it off. I'll set it back down. I'll give it a shaky shaky. I'll come to the other side. I'll stall for at least a minute or two hours. So. Superficial friction. Warming stuff up. Compressions. Increasing blood flow. Add the stretch. Pull up into the stretch. Nice and braced. Taking the knee. Bigger circle. I'm mainly just checking for any pain, any discomfort, any no bueno spot. If I can go a little farther, cool. Can go across on this side. If there is no impingement, 
<laughs> if there is no impingement, I might plant that foot and do a bigger twisting stretch. I would generally want to put my hand on their hand, on their ribs, instead of my hand just on the ribs. If it's a boy, I'd probably be less worried. This is nice. This is a decent stretch. I couldn't do it on the other side because of the hip impingement. I'll back her up. Compress. Drive the hip into the table. Go forward, do we start to get resistance? This hip is a lot looser. There's where we start. I'm gonna add the twist. If I don't, if I don't compress her, the hip comes up and you don't feel much stretch. I need a decent amount of weight dropped into this. And we back it off. Into the hamstring stretch. Keeping the knee relatively stiff. Some people don't like that knee locked out well, but I like to keep it pretty close. And then come up to you, feel the resistance. Wait it out for a little bit. Make sure she's not too bad. <laughs> and I bring it out. Shaky, shaky, shaky. If you want, you can even do a little bit of both. Fiend. If you wanted to do the shoulders, say they didn't want their hips, you wanted a little extra time, or you have 15 minutes, then I would come up. Here's why I say, as a boy, I have to be very careful of dangling arms off the table. <laughs> I want to pin this arm always to the table with my hip. Now I can do my superficial friction, warm up the joint, deeper compressions. Then I can take the shoulder for a stretch. It is very safe to go out. It is safe to come up. I get nervous with anything more than about this. If I'm stretching that shoulder overhead, I'd come here and just get traction. I know in some of class you get all the way down and take this down to the table. I personally would tap out because I'll feel like you're gonna pop my shoulder up. So knowing that, I always come from a safe, I go up about 45, it's nice traction. You can see that shoulder distract right here and it's generally safe. Distract right, here, that. also safe. Distraction here, also safe. Yeah. Run around and do the other side. Superficial friction. Deep compressions. Traction stretch here. Out. Out. And. If they allow you to want to, you can go deeper, but get their permission. Feedback is nice when you're going through this. If you got through this much and you still had some time, and there wasn't a face cradle right here, some little neck pumps are nice. A little bit of shoulder work, a little bit of neck traction also feels good. Often I'd go back between some cat paws. Whenever I work on somebody's head, I always have my head to the side. Especially if I'm talking, they get a little balls and spit on the <laughs> And there we exchange a lot less air from this position. And then the neck, get a little traction. You can do some elevation, a little traction necky stuff. This is a good way to kill a minute or two before you finish up. And that, Thanks. Okay. Come down, Stacy. <laughs> That's the basic flow. If it was a pre event, which I'm assuming this is, I'm trying to get your body revved up, increase your relaxation, but also increase your innervation. Post event, I just might go a little slower. Might mm -hmm. not, you might not need that. You're already warm, so you probably don't need cross fiber friction. I could probably go light, do more effleurage, and do more compression, but less of the uh, 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 less of the uh, the warm up and generally just a little slower pace at the end. 10 minutes goes fast no matter what. Um, but it's, it's always a good idea. Manage expectations. That's the biggest thing I can do. Ask them what they want. Mm -hmm. Know in your head about what will fit in 10 or 15 minutes. A good massage on the back. A decent massage on the back with some hip stretching or really fast once over. Mm -hmm. Those are pretty much your options. Good luck.